In today's video, we are doing an Xbox Series X versus PlayStation 5 performance comparison. In this video, we're going to do a comparison of both consoles in terms of the actual usage of them. Anything from startup time of booting the console up to playing the video games to the disk drives to actually switching between games and how the consoles actually work. So we're going to time everything and compare the different times and you'll see a different console works differently than how you expected it to or maybe you'll get the same results as you originally expect so that's what we're gonna do in today's video it's gonna be a lot of fun so let's delve right in I think the best place to start because I've got the Xbox Series X already plugged in we're gonna start with the test of the Xbox Series X and time the boot up to actually playing a video game and how long it takes so let's do that three two one go and we are already on in about, what, five seconds? Less than five seconds? Wow, that is super fast. Let's see the time of actually connecting the Xbox controller to the Xbox and see how long that takes. Three, two, one. All right. And that takes about six seconds to start up with the actual controller. One, two, three. With the quick resume, I'm gonna guess it would take something like two seconds. It took a bit less than seven seconds there. We can play a bit of the game and compare some of the graphics. And what I'll do is I'll compare the graphics between the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X after actually playing a little bit. So we're gonna go to Limgrave all the way there and compare the different graphics between the two different modes. So. Let's do that. I'm gonna pick a Samurai because Samurai is kind of cool. This is the Xbox Series X gameplay right here. I kind of wish I started with the Samurai. It looks awesome. These are our system preferences. So right now we're at prioritizing high frame rate. So this is running at 60 FPS. Now I'll put on prioritize quality and see if there's any difference. Oh, wow. You can kind of see a difference there. Let's go back and see if there's any difference. Go back to prioritize frame rate. To be honest, I'm not seeing much of a difference. To be honest, I'm not seeing much of a difference between prioritizing the quality and prioritizing the frame rate here. It must be a smoother gameplay when you're prioritizing, I guess, the frame rate. And then when you're prioritizing the movements, you're not getting the same thing. This is how the Xbox Series X version of Limgrave looks. It's beautiful, right? Got some nice graphics there. Got the cool birds. Now, let's go to system and change to prioritizing quality and see if there's any difference there. Like, I can't tell a difference. So let's go back to prioritizing frame rate. It still looks the exact same to me. Maybe it's because I'm running it through the Elgato game capture card and I can't really tell if there's any difference because we're recording at 1080p. Let's switch between a game and see how long it takes with the quick resume. And three, two, one. One. And... We are in. So it took about seven seconds to switch between the games and the Xbox Series X. That is very quick. We all know with the quick resume option, it's not gonna take that long. The only other thing that I haven't done is actually putting in a disc and seeing how long it takes between the games. So might as well put in a disc real quick and time how long it'll take. Three, two, one, and go. Let's see how long it takes. How long is it gonna take? It's getting there. I don't know. It's gonna take about... About 15 to 16 seconds right there for boot up time for a video game. All right, so that's the final test. Now let's go to the PlayStation 5. All right, so now we have the PlayStation 5 connected. So let's turn on the console and see how long it would take for it to load. Three, two, one. Okay. 
as we can hear, there's quite a lot of noise. And there's also a drop of frame rate that was going to about 54 frames per second there. Okay. And also, with the controller, we know that the controller does not turn on automatically. That took about 23 seconds for it to load fully. Not even 23 seconds, because you gotta press the PlayStation button as well, and then it will go into the console. But relatively, it's gonna take about 20 to 30 seconds. Let's do the PlayStation 5 controller in three, two, one. And it is now turned on. We're gonna see how long this takes. All right, we're about 10 seconds in now, almost. Yep, we're 10 seconds in. And it's booting up. How long is it gonna take? It's still going. It's still going. And there we go. It takes about 26 seconds of time to boot up the PlayStation 5. And comparing it to the Xbox Series X, we know that now that the Xbox Series X is a lot quicker in terms of the boot up process, you're gonna be spending a lot longer to trying to get to your games as fast as possible with the Xbox Series X, it's a lot quicker. With the PlayStation 5, it's a bit slower. We wanna play some Elden Ring. We're gonna do this with two different tests. So I've got the actual disc version of Elden Ring. So we're gonna put the disc in and time how long it will take. And what's great is it's the same game so we can compare the graphics to three, two, one, and go. How long will it take for the PlayStation 5 to load a game from the disc drive? All right, it is loading. It's making a lot of noise here. All right. And I actually have to click on the game to be able to load it up. It's interesting. Let's see how long it takes for it to fully boot up a game. We know that it's gonna take a lot longer. All right, so we're at the main menu now. So that took about 34 seconds. I might do a test again, just to see how long it will take from the actual disc to load up inside the PlayStation 5 console. One, two, three, and go. Okay. Let's see how long it will take. And it is booting up, makes lots of noise, and that's it. It takes what? Under 10 seconds, just under 10 seconds, about nine, and it fully loads the game and you're able to play it. Maybe we could test the time between the switcher and see how long it takes between the two games. So one, two, three. Let's see how long it goes to Returnal. I mean, Returnal is a game that it doesn't really go from where you last were, it kind of resets the game, but yeah. This is mainly what the switcher does. It just goes from the start and it doesn't go to where you last were, like the Xbox. It just doesn't do that quick switching, but it's still cool. So we are pretty much from where we last were and that took about 31 seconds. So it seems like it's gonna take 30 seconds to do anything with the PlayStation 5, but that's cool to know as well. Okay, let's choose the same guy. This is our main menu. It definitely looks absolutely amazing. I'll tell you what, the keyboard looks a lot nicer. And actually the feel of the controller just feels a lot nicer with the PlayStation 5 as well. All right, this is what it looks like inside of the game with the prioritizing the frame rate. And if we go back to prioritize quality, this is what it looks like. It looks nice, right? I noticed like the red just seemed a lot more red, if that makes sense. And those yellows just seem a little bit more yellow. Wow, it looks amazing on the PlayStation 5. I'm wondering if we put it side by side, if there is 
much difference, but that is the prioritizing like setting. So now let's put on prioritize frame rate and see if there's much of a difference. It does look absolutely amazing. I don't know, all the colors just seem a little bit more like full, if that makes sense. Like the yellows seem more yellow and the reds seem more red. It's still the exact same sort of way of playing in the game. There's all the exact same controls, it's just on a different console. But definitely having the gel feel of the D-pads with the PlayStation 5 is actually a bit nicer, I would say. And like I've said before, like the colors just feel more whole when I'm looking at it. I don't know if that's a natural thing, but we're going to see that with the actual comparison if we look. And we are in Limgrave. It looks pretty similar to how the Xbox Series X version looked. I don't notice too much of a difference just by looking at the game. And this is on the prioritizing frame rate mode so let's go to the performance mode performance quality it kind of looks the exact same but you know it's up to you guys what you guys see but yeah it looks great they both look very similar i'm not noticing too much of a difference maybe with that red i noticed a bit of a difference and some of the yellows this one is the xbox series x and we have the playstation Basically, we're going to look at the reds and see if there's much difference. I'm not seeing, I guess like the reds, I'm seeing they're close up. There is a little bit of a difference with in terms of the contrast. I feel like the reds on the PlayStation 5 is a little bit more contrasty with the darks and everything. We got two very similar sort of positions. As we can see, there's more light sort of bouncing off our character with the PlayStation 5 with the ray tracing. The PlayStation 5 sort of has that bounce off and there's more contrast. Whereas the Xbox sort of looks a bit more flat when we look at these details. I'm looking at sort of the light bouncing off the character and everything, how it all sorts of illuminates. The Xbox Series X looks very sharp. See, that's a very similar image to what we had before. So we do have some of that illuminescence there as well. But also with the background, I'm noticing the PlayStation 5 has more stuff in focus in the background. Whereas that doesn't look as in focus. Whereas that looks a bit more sharp. All right, so overall, we've learned lots about the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5 today. I hope this video has helped you with deciding which console you want for yourself and the performance reviews of both. Both are great. I definitely find the PlayStation 5 is a lot noisier as a console. Like you can hear sort of the internal fans and everything as well. And the Xbox Series X is a more quiet console. So it's like a PC versus a Mac in a way. Both are great consoles and we know that PlayStation 5 have great exclusives. So you can't really go wrong with either. So hopefully this video helped you out. If you want to see more, like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.